Hi, I'm Karen Elaine, and I want to show you pearlescent watercolors today. I'm going to compare the brands that I own, and I own quite a few, and then I'm going to do a process video. So stick around, please subscribe, and thumbs up, and let's get started. Okay, there's so many watercolors and really so, so little time, but I have some watercolors here I've had for a really long time. Um, actually, this is, I'll just start with the one that's on top. This one is the Paul Rubens set. It just kind of came out from nowhere, this company did. They have a set of 12 pearlescent colors, and it was about $30 for the set, and it came in a really nice tin. I really like it. Um, so I, wanted, I made a little swatch beforehand, um, so that it looks really opaque on, you can see it looks pretty opaque on on the uh, white paper, watercolor paper, and pretty sparkly on the on the black. So I got this on Amazon, like I said, about thirty nine, about thirty bucks, and free shipping. But you can see that you know that's fairly sparkly and even uh, you know it lays evenly on the paper. So I like those. It was really nice, but they're on the pricey side. So I also have a set of this old set of Fine Tech. It looks like they're um, interference and metallics, and they're really nice. Um, let me just find my swatch. They're nice, but they're about thirty dollars a set as well. They are pretty much the premier metallic so far. They have lots of. They're very opaque on the uh, black paper. Really beautiful colors, and not so much on the white. As you can see, most of the colors in the set were interference colors, and they don't show on the the white at all. So anyway, those are but those are really nice paints. Then I have these paints that I got from Prima. I bought these. I think they were about fifteen or sixteen dollars for a set. Twelve colors, nice little lid. You know, nice set. Um, those have nice sparkle to them, and they're pretty opaque on the white paper as well. They're a little granulating, I can see, on the white paper. Um, pretty glittery, very consistent in the shine, but not as shiny as the, the uh, Fine Tech. But they're still pretty nice. And then I have the Kurataki, the Gonzai Gem Colors. They are in a... They're, oh, I don't know where I put the thing, but anyway doesn't matter. They are very nice. So they're an opaque on the black paper and they're nice and shiny on the white but they also have a lot of granulation. And These are Japanese watercolors and maybe they're supposed to go on white rice paper and they probably would look better on rice paper. Um, they're about $27 for a set of six colors. A little on the pricey side. Um, another set is the Niji Pearlescent watercolors. These are about $8 or $9 a set. They, they're 21 colors, and they are not as shiny or shimmery than the others, but the colors are gorgeous on the white. They're just more like a, I think these are more of a real pearlescent rather than some of the other ones are more metallic. Um, they look really good on the black as well. But like I said, they're more um, pearlescent, more of a sort of a soft sheen rather than a really intense metallic. So the, there you are. There's, I, I'm sure there's some more uh, pearlescent watercolors. One I'd like to try is Daniel Smith, and I ordered some, and it hasn't come yet, so maybe the next time. But I want to do, uh, I'm going to pick one of these paints, and I'm going to do a little process video. So stay tuned. See you in a minute. Hi, I'm back, and actually I decided to do this technique with the least expensive and the most expensive pearlescent and I think it'd be fun to see what happens uh, you know how they look after they dry and it'd be fun to put it on the same card so what I did is I just uh, taped on with some washi tape I taped a, it was a, oh, a Strathmore greeting card coal black greeting card onto a little board so that I can turn it around and I'm going to be using a triangle brush and this one's Rosemary & Co you can get uh, also silver has a triangle brush and I'll have some water and my paints, and I'm just going to have a little tray in case I need to mix. It's also it's very good to spritz your watercolors before you start, especially if you're going to use all the colors. Spritz it and let the let the uh, pigments activate and let that let it soften and get so you'll have more opacity and more shimmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these fun little flowers 
uh, using basically by dipping the brush in one color. So I'm going to start with the uh, Niji's. And I'm just going to start by, I need to swirl, let's see, I want my flower to be a nice pink color. So I'm just going to swirl it around in the pink paint. And I probably should get another brush to mix or to, to get the other uh, colors going, and I'll explain why. So I'm dipping the whole brush as much as I can, saturating it as much as I can with pink, and you can see how much I've put on the brush. Um, I'm also going to, then I'm going to take in a, in a different color, I'm just going to use blue, and I'm mixing up the, actually I'm taking the blue and getting it as saturated as possible with another brush. I'm not going to really use that brush, I'm just mixing it. And I'm going to tip, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tip the brush in the, just in the end, not the, not the whole thing, just the end. I'm tipping, so now I have, you can see, I have the brush loaded with the pink and the blue. Now I need to go faster than I'm doing, so I'm hoping that will come out, but that's how you, that's how you basically load your brush. So I'm just going to start, and I think the side of my, the, uh, my card top is right over here, or my folded edge is right where that black dot is, so I'll just go ahead and I'll start making some flowers. And I'm just going to start by taking this brush and just pushing it and kind of squiggling it, you know, kind of, I don't know how to explain this. Um, I'm just kind of gently scrubbing lightly the top of the surface. And if you, you'll see, I'm just going to make five petals here. And you can see what happened is you can see the blue is showing, you know, it's a, like basically a blended blended flower. Now that's the Niji watercolor. So I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to do the Paul Rubens and see what happens. Try to do this, do it the same way. So I'll pick, I'll pick a pink flower just like I did with the Niji. Um, it's a little, these little trays are a little harder to get the brush loaded because they are smaller. So that's why it's kind of nice to have a a larger tray that will make it a little easier. So if I just get pick up as much color as I possibly can into into that brush, so you, I've got it nice and loaded. And then I think I'll pick a this sort of a it's like a blue. It's a little more intense than the other. But I, what I want to do is uh, like with the, the last thing. It's just kind of moved around so that it's plenty, there's plenty of paint there. And maybe it's a good idea, in these, especially in these, if you're not using a tubed watercolor, I think it might be fun to try the Daniel Smith because they're tubed in a tube and I can just put them, I can basically make a puddle of as much as I want. And this one here, I'm just going to put some paint on there. Okay, and then I'm just going to dip it into the, just the tip only load it up, and now I'm going to just do the same thing, except over on this side. We'll see how it looks. Whoa, I can see that is pretty intense. Very nice. I like the Niji one for maybe a more of a subtle, maybe using both, because then I can have like a receding flower and a one that's more prominent. I suppose that can, I can do that. So you can see what I did. Now, they'll look different when they're dry, completely dry, but you can see one is more more uh, brilliant or more pigmented. And this one is more of a satin, kind of a satin flower. So I'm going to continue to make these flowers. And I'll go ahead and I'll fast forward so you can see. Now that I have the flowers on there, I'm just going to try using some greens just to make some leaves. And I'm not really sure I like this Rosemary Co. and Co. brush because you know, the silver triangle brush makes for a nicer shaped petal. But that's okay. This is just, I'm just showing you 
these watercolors and their properties and not trying to make a masterpiece. So I'm going to go ahead and do some leaves and some maybe some, make some marks just to make it interesting. Now I'm just going to add some more swirls and marks because the border that I created is going to make a nice clean edge. And I'm not really sure I like my flowers that I made this time, but I've done some nice ones in the past. This time they were a little sloppy and I just think the brush that I had wasn't my best choice. But that's all right. We just, if we have lemons, we try to make a lemonade. Let me just try to make the best of our happy accidents. Now there, I think I've done enough. I'm going to wait for this to completely dry and then I'm going to remove the tape and we'll see how it looks. Well there you go. I've taken off the tape and even though it was a little sloppy I kind of like it. I'm you know I would rather have used the silver triangle brush but I like the way it looks. I'll make a nice card. Now one thing I noticed is after it dried I wanted to make some details into the metallic into the pearlescence with a pen. And I noticed that the uh, where the Niji watercolors were, I was able to draw with a pen, little tiny lines. The uh, other color, the uh, fine, uh, oh, the Rubens, that's the, what it was, it resisted that a little bit. So I really couldn't get any lines on the uh, Rubens. That, I thought that was a little strange, but I have no idea why, but I kind of like the idea that I can layer over the Niji. So there you go. I think that having both all of the sets, of course that's me, I always like to, I like to have it all, but I like the idea of having an inexpensive set and the fancier set just as a way to get a little variation in, in the metallics and you know, hey, you can't have too many watercolors. So I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe and leave a comment below and just let me know what you think. All right, have a wonderful day.